Right, today's the day that we put on our own track meeting. Well, not track meeting, field event meeting with an invitation triple jump. So we've got a couple of the top guys in the country coming down to Sutton, including our very own Jonathan Alori. Let's hope for some 16 meter jumps. So the competition's just about to start. We've got Nathan, Michael, Jonathan, Chuko, Rob, Alex and Abel Rachman, all the way from Egypt. We decided to put the meeting on as a number of guys who are in with a chance of achieving the European Championships qualifying standard of 16 metres 60 didn't actually have another meeting on the programme where they could go for the distance. As I mentioned, we actually managed to put the competition on in a matter of days and it was great to see three 16 metre plus jumpers in the field. I filmed most of the competition and you're going to see most of the top jumps performed. This is Michael Pupamplu who has a best of 16 meters 43. Take a look at their techniques and learn and apply some things to your jumping. I'll also make some comments as we go along. Think about how these comments can benefit your own technique. Here's Chuko Krib who has a best of 15 meters 33. There's perhaps too much bounce as Chuko moves through the phases rather than swinging out and forwards on each of the contacts. In the first round, both Rob and Nathan ran through on their attempts. You want to be able to hit that takeoff perfectly each time. It seemed to be contagious as our own Jonathan also didn't complete this jump. In round two, performances began to improve and it's a shame this jump was ruled a no jump by Michael as it would probably have been his longest. Take a look at the contacts and the forward movement throughout the phases. Triple jump is all about creating range through the three phases and you need to be patient and wait for the ground contacts. This applies also to the arm action, which will drive you forwards on each contact. Notice the single arm action swing in the step phase here from Rob. Here's Nathan Fox, who has a best of 16 meters 81 and has been to two Commonwealth Games, for example. Nathan's on his way back from injury from the Commonwealth Games the third round saw the best jumps of the competition. If you listen to his foot contacts on the runner, you'll hear them getting quicker and quicker, which is good, but probably too quick, as it looks like, to me, he chopped into the board. The wind reading was 1.83 metres a second following, so this could explain it as there were headwinds previously. Look at the contacts out of the phases, particularly the step phase, and see the range that's created through the hip before the strike. The distance was 15 meters 86. Here's Nathan's best effort, and he's getting his angles better through the phases. Each jumper brings to the event their own personal strengths and weaknesses. Nathan certainly goes a lot higher through the phases compared to Jonathan, for example. Here's Jonathan, and this was to be the longest jump of the competition. Let's take a look at the jump again. He carried his speed through the phases a lot better on this attempt and managed to get that greater range I was talking about, particularly out of the step with the foot being extended away and waiting for the track. We found that this also gets his arms in the right position. A triple jump, like the long jump, relies on leg stiffness and in particular eccentric ability. 
that's the ability of the leg muscles to be able to absorb contact. However, if you absorb too much force on each landing, you will lose momentum and the subsequent concentric muscle shortening action that propels you forward will be compromised. The triple jump really is the sum of its constituent parts and this also relies heavily on appropriate conditioning. In previous videos, I've explained about the phase ratio between the hop, step and the jump and this should be between 30 to 35% for each phase. Having said that, the hop and the jump phases should be the slightly longer ones, with research indicating that the hop dominant model will produce the longest jumps overall. This is probably because you'll be able to maintain a greater speed after the hop. If you look closely at the jumps by Jonathan, Nathan and Michael, they're clearing about 5 meters 60, 70, 80 on their hop phase. Even the elite triple jumpers don't hop that much more than 6 meters as these results from the London World Championships indicate. To jump around 17 meters, the hop and the step needs to get out to around 11 meters. If you over hop, the chances are the step will be too short which will compromise overall distance. Of course there's going to be some exceptions to this. However, if you try to stick to a relatively balanced phase ratio with a slight dominance on the hop, you'll be well positioned to jump as far as you can. So here you can see Jonathan landing on the 7 metre board, just about, so he's hopping a high 5 metres, 5 metres 90, potentially. For Jonathan, it's all about generating greater distance and contact speed out of the hop and into the step. When he masters this, he'll get close to 17 metres, all being well. And really, the same would apply to Michael and Nathan. We're now in the sixth round of the competition and here's Michael jumping 15 meters 66. Throughout the competition, we shared some coaching comments and some advice was given to Jonathan, for example, on his arm action and also the delay for the foot strike. Everything considered, it was a successful competition. Okay, none of the guys managed to achieve the 16 meter 60 European qualifying standard. However, the event provided a useful opportunity for them to compete against each other and share ideas. Just to reiterate, it was a win for Jonathan Elori with a distance of 16 meters 07 with Michael Papamplu second with 15 meters 86 and third was Nathan Fox with 15 meters 81. As usual, thanks for listening and good luck with your training and competition and do subscribe to the channel and leave any questions you may have in the comments section below.